Hey everybody, this is Michael Pavlovich, and I'm going to be taking you through the ZBrush to Keyshot bridge process and doing a little Keyshot quick start as well. We'll start with a product comparison between Keyshot HD versus Keyshot Pro, including what features I tend to use in Pro. I'll attempt to call out Pro features as we use them in the demo so you can decide which version will be sufficient for your own use. We'll then discuss the installation process for Keyshot and the activation steps for the ZBrush to Keyshot bridge. We'll hop right into ZBrush and do some very light modeling. Of course, you can use any asset you'd like from ZBrush, but since this is an AMD Ryzen Threadripper processor that was very kindly provided to me by the awesome folks over at AMD, I figured we'd have a little fun and go over a few new features in ZBrush 4R8 as well. We'll start with modeling a logo using the SVG functionality in the Text3D plugin. Then we'll use the Keyshot bridge to send that on over to Keyshot. Once we're in Keyshot, we'll cover a number of basic topics, starting with navigation, hotkeys, menu layout, and organization. We'll start digging a little bit deeper into the library and project settings in the Environments and Materials video, check out the Keyshot Cloud for some extra content, then move into custom lighting setups and ground plane controls. At this point, we'll move into texture options to get more out of our maps, then talk about how to use the HDRI editor in Keyshot to generate and export your own custom HDR environments. Once we've got the basics under our belt, we'll do another quick model in ZBrush, this time utilizing ZModeler to get us the assets that we need, which in this case will be a mug, some liquid, and a foam top. We'll send those objects over via Keyshot Bridge, and we'll talk about Keyshot's ability to edit geometry, as well as the improved round edges functionality. We'll talk about rendering glass and liquids, applying labels and label properties, and finally head into the material graph for even more possibilities when it comes to creating a custom material. Finally, we'll go over the render menu settings and render our full resolution image. Like I mentioned before, for this demo we'll be utilizing the AMD Ryzen Threadripper processor. Luckily, both ZBrush and Keyshot are processor-hungry programs, so we'll be taking a peek at the task manager every once in a while to see how it's holding up. Speaking of, for you hardware junkies, here's the system specs we'll be using for this demo. First, this is the AMD Ryzen Threadripper 1950X. We've got the 16 cores, 32 threads, 64 PCIe lanes with a 3.4 GHz base and a 4 GHz boost. This is all being cooled by the main gear closed-loop liquid cooling EPIC 240 supercooler. Here, as you can see, we've got 128 gig of Kingston HyperX Predator DDR4 3000 quad channel RAM, and that's all plugged into the ATX ASUS X399 Zenith Extreme motherboard that's being powered by an EVGA 1000 watt supernova. For hard drives, we've got a couple of Samsung 850 Evos. The system is very tuned, tweak, and overclock friendly, so in future videos, we might have a little more hardware fun. But enough about specifications, let's get started.